Hello learners, welcome into the world of economics. I, Dr. Ritu Gupta, I'm going to take you through a session on economic growth, economic development in general and in the context of the Indian economy. So let us begin by understanding what economic growth, economic development is all about. In this session, you will be learning about the meaning of economic growth and economic development, the concept of sustainable development and human development, the factors affecting economic growth and features of the underdeveloped countries. So let us understand economic growth. Economic growth is the process of increase in national income and per capita income measured by increase in real national income and not just the increase in money income or what we commonly called as the nominal national income. Increase in real income should be over a long period and increase in income should be based on increase in productive capacity. Having understood this about economic growth, let us now define economic growth. Economic growth is measured by the increase in per capita income. It is the better measure of economic growth since it reflects increase in the improvement of living standards of the masses. Economic growth is measured by increase in real national income and not just the increase in money income or what we call as the nominal national income. Having established this, let us proceed further and understand economic growth even deeper. Economic growth, as we can see here, is the increase in output of goods and services and it should not happen just due to increase in market price of the existing goods. Economic growth is the increase of real national income and per capita income and it should be sustained over a long period of time. Having defined economic growth, let us now understand economic growth. It is important to understand that economic growth is not just a short run seasonal or temporary increases in income. It should not hence be confused with economic growth. Economic growth has to happen over a long period of time and it has to be sustained. Economic growth is the increase in income based on increase in productive capacity. What is this? Yes, it is definitely something good happening in the economy. Now, what about the different sectors in the economy? Economic growth is accompanied by modernization or use of new technology in production. Hence, it gives us an insight into the developed transport network. If economic growth is accompanied with strengthening of infrastructure, such as improved electricity generation, again, it gives us an insight into the improved standard of living of the people. And hence, economic growth is the increase in income which can be sustained only when this increase results from some durable increase in productive capacity of the economy, such as modernization or use of new technology in production. The strengthening of infrastructure like transport network and improved electricity generation and such effects. Now, what is economic development? Economic development is the process by which a nation improves the economic, political and social well-being of its people. I would like to emphasize here on the added two new dimensions to economic growth which is political and social well-being of the people. Let us understand this. Economic development is the changes 
in qualitative terms. It is accompanied with changes in quantitative terms. The qualitative changes are social attitudes and customs and quantitative changes are the increase in national income and output. Let us now compare economic growth and economic development. Let us first compare the meaning. Economic growth as we can see in the table here shows that it is an increase in the real output of goods and services in the country. On the other hand, economic development implies changes in income, savings and investment along with progressive changes in socio-economic structure of country. These structures are the institutional and technological changes. Is economic growth and economic development clear now? I am sure the meaning is clear. Let us proceed further in a comparison to the factors that cause these two. Economic growth relates to gradual increase in one of the components of gross domestic product which is consumption, government spending, investment and net exports. On the other hand, economic development relates to growth of human capital, decrease in inequality figures and structural changes that improve the quality of life of the population. Now we have understood two factors. First, the definition of each of these terms, economic growth and development. And second, the factors or the changes that bring about these two in the economy. There is yet another dimension wherein we can differentiate between the two and that is how we measure economic growth and economic development. Economic growth is measured by quantitative factors such as increase in real GDP or per capita income. Economic development on the other hand is measured by the qualitative measures such as the Human Development Index or the HDI, the Gender Related Index or the Human Poverty Index, the Infant Mortality and Literacy Rates etc. All these are used to measure economic development. So we have compared economic growth and economic development on three aspects. First is the definition, then is how we measure it and the third is how they are impacted in the economy. Let us now understand what effect each of these has in the economy. Needless to say that economic growth brings quantitative changes in the economy, whereas economic development leads to qualitative as well as quantitative changes in the economy. Can we then say that economic development contains economic growth as well? That means economic growth is a sub part of economic development. If economic growth happens, can we say economic development has occurred? No. For economic development to occur, economic growth has to bring about qualitative changes as well in the economy. And what is the relevance of each of these? Economic growth reflects the growth of national or per capita income. This we have already established. Whereas economic development reflects progress in the quality of life in a country. Let us now understand the third concept of development that we had mentioned earlier and that is sustainable development. As economies are progressing, as the subject matter of economics is progressing, we are introducing newer and better ways of measuring progress. So the first one was economic growth, second is economic development and now we have the third concept as well which is sustainable development. Sustainable development is that development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That means we are taking care not only of the needs of the present generation 
but also of all our future generations. This has a great impact on our way of utilization of resources. So sustainable development includes the protection of future economic growth and future development. It is the process of development in which economic and other policies are designed to bring about development which is economically, socially and ecologically sustainable. So sustainable development has three dimensions again, economical, social and ecological. So we have to work on all these. Sustainable development is that development which is pro-job, pro-people and pro-nature. That means it is that development which provides employment because output is increasing. It is pro-people, that is it's improving the quality of life of the people, socially sound and it is pro-nature because ecologically it is conserving our resources. And this is what sustainable development is all about. It is improving the growth of the countries. What does sustainable development focus on? It focuses on poverty reduction, productive employment, social integration and environmental regeneration. So it is in this manner more focused on these four aspects, poverty reduction, productive employment, social integration and environmental regeneration. What does it require? Sustainable development requires the preservation of ecological resources and greater use of renewable resources. As the picture so beautifully depicts, we are moving from lesser sustainable development to a more and improved sustainable development. Encouragement to use of environmentally safe techniques for development purposes, that is, focus on reduction of all kinds of pollution involved in the economic activities. And this is what sustainable development requires further. It is the formulation and implementation of policy framework for people security and human justice, including ecological and economic security. As we said, this aspect will take care of the social and ecological factor of sustainable development. There is another development indicator which is the human development. According to the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, human development may be defined as a process of enlarging people's choices. As we know, economics is all about choices and how we meet these choices. So, when people's choices are enlarged, naturally, it is an outcome of human development. So, very beautifully put in this sentence, a process of enlarging people's choices is the human development. At all levels of development, the three essential choices for people include to live a long and healthy life, to acquire better knowledge, and to have access to resources needed for a decent standard of living. These are the three essentials of human development. If these essential choices are not available, many other opportunities to improve the quality of life will remain inaccessible. That means if you are able to provide these three, then there will be further human development. These are the key, the focal areas of concern. How do we measure human development? Yes, there is an index to measure human development known as the Human Development Index. The combined effect of various components of human development is measured through 
the Human Development Index or commonly known as the HDI developed by the UNDP program of the United Nations. Having understood the various aspects of development, it's time now for us to focus on the factors that affect economic growth, social, ecological, natural, all these factors, cultural, political, these will all be affected once we are able to take care of the factors that affect economic growth. The process of economic growth is a highly complex phenomena and is influenced by a number of and a variety of factors such as political, social and cultural. These factors are clubbed in two categories, namely the economic factors and the non-economic factors. Let us understand each of these individually. So what are the economic factors? Quickly, natural resources, capital formation, technological process or entrepreneurship development, human resources, population growth and social overheads. Let us go through each of these individually. Same way we have the non-economic factors such as the socio-economic, cultural, psychological and political factors. Let us first undergo the understanding of each of the six economic factors. The first one being natural resources. The principal factor affecting the development of an economy is the natural resources. The natural resources include land area and the quality of the soil, forest wealth, good river system, minerals and oil resources along with the good climate and so on. If these natural resources are well developed, economic factor of natural resources will definitely lead to a faster economic growth. The second factor of economic nature is capital formation. Capital formation is the process by which a community's savings are channelized into investments in capital goods such as plant, equipment and machinery that increases nation's productive capacity and workers' efficiency, thus ensuring a larger flow of goods and services in a country. So capital formation is important to economic growth as well. The faster the rate of capital formation, needless to say, faster will be economic growth. The third factor is technological progress. This again is an important factor and it implies the research into the use of new and better methods of production or the improvement of old methods. It's important now to understand how technological progress and entrepreneurship are interlinked. The greater the technological progress, the greater will be the development of entrepreneurship. It is the entrepreneur that or who accepts technological progress and implements new techniques in the production process. So entrepreneurship, which is the ability to find out new investment opportunities, willingness to take risks and make investment in the new and growing business units is crucial to technological progress. The greater the entrepreneurship development, the greater will be the technological progress in any economy and hence greater will be the rate of growth of the economy. Human resources. The development of human resources, that is, a good quality of population is very important in determining the level of economic growth. So, the investment on human capital in the form of educational and medical and such other social schemes is very much desirable. If a nation's human resources developed, they will definitely be experiencing a faster rate of economic growth. The fifth factor is population growth. Population which on one hand is not a very desirable growth factor, on the other hand it provides us labor. 
the labor supply comes from population growth and it provides expanding market for goods and services. Thus, more labor produces larger output which a wider market absorbs. In this process, output, income and employment keep on rising and economic growth improves. So, population growth also affects the economic growth of any country. The sixth factor is social overheads. The provision of social overheads such as schools, colleges, technical institutions, medical colleges, hospitals and public health facilities are other economic factors that determine the economic growth. When these social overheads are taken by any economy, then the rate of growth of that economy will definitely be higher as it is going to affect the human resource development, it is going to affect technological progress, entrepreneurship and so on and so forth. So these were the economic factors. Let us now understand the non-economic factors that affect or influence the economic growth. These are, as already brought to your notice, socio-economic, cultural, psychological and political factors. These, let me tell you, are equally significant in any economy. The political stability and strong administration in an economy are essential and helpful in modern economic growth. One feels more productive and more secure in such economies. Social and psychological factors include social attitudes, social values and social institutions which change with the expansion of education and transformation of culture from one society to the other. So this is another non-economic factor which does affect economic growth. If our social attitudes change, then we are more open to accepting changes which are modern and hence we are also more accepting to economic growth and economic growth hence becomes faster. The third is education. It is now fairly recognized that education is the main vehicle of development. Greater progress has been achieved in those countries where education is widespread. This is something we all know. Also, the fourth non-economic factor is the desire for material betterment. The desire for material progress is a necessary precondition for economic development. Societies that focus on self-satisfaction, self-denial, faith, in fate, etc. limit risk and enterprise and thus keep the economy backward. Hence, to be fostering economic growth, we have to be desiring betterment or development and we have to be desiring new, better and more variety of goods and services so that we are more risk taking and more enterprising. So with this, we have revised all the factors that affect economic growth, both economic as well as non-economic in nature. Let us now understand the features of underdeveloped countries. What are these features? First and foremost, an underdeveloped country suffers from low per capita income. The second is the poor level of living. Vast majority of people in underdeveloped nations lie under the conditions of poverty, malnutrition, disease, illiteracy, etc. Even basic necessities of life such as minimum food, clothing and shelter are not easily accessible to the poor masses. There is a high rate of growth of population and this high rate of growth of population neutralizes economic growth. High population implies greater consumption expenditure and lower investments in productive activities and it slows down economic development. 
The fourth common feature of underdeveloped countries is the highly unequal income distribution. There is income inequality between the rich and the poor people within these countries and this leads to their underdeveloped characteristic. There is prevalence of mass poverty and low levels of productivity. Productivity as measured as output produced per person tends to be very low in an underdeveloped country and this is due to inefficient workforce, the low work culture and the low use of capital in the form of machinery and equipment. Also, there is low rate of capital formation itself because the saving rate may be low or maybe the savings is not getting converted to capital formation. And hence, these seven features of underdeveloped countries are common amongst them. The low rate of capital formation is also another factor that is common to underdeveloped countries. The eighth feature of an underdeveloped country is technological backwardness. In most of the sectors, an underdeveloped economy has techniques of production which are generally obsolete or are existing mainly due to low saving rate. There is high level of unemployment and that is due to lack of capital and low level of development in various economic sectors. These countries hence are not able to absorb the rising labor supply. And finally, there is the low social indicators of development such as low literacy rate, high infant mortality rate, low expectancy of life, etc. And all these 10 factors together tell us a lot about underdeveloped economies. Let us now quickly revise what we have learnt in this session. We began with the meaning of economic growth and economic development, the concept of sustainable development and human development, the factors affecting economic growth and finally we have understood the features of underdeveloped countries. Thank you very much and I Dr. Ritu Gupta am happy to be bringing these sessions in economics for you. I hope you are learning of the chapter on economic growth and development and especially in the context of India is fruitful. Thank you.